Today's topic is talking about supplies and ordering supplies. Now for an art teacher, supplies are one of those necessary things that you have to do every single year. And this is a quick overview as to some tips on how I buy supplies and how I look at supplies. So I want you guys to check out this video and hopefully you get some uh, good tips on when you're purchasing supplies for your own classroom. Well, number one, we need to know what we're going to make. So on my board of th stuff that I do, I have on the side here, I, must, uh, I have my surface design class and my ceramics class and the supplies that I need for both of those. So in the middle here, I've got two supply lists. So you can easily see that, you know, I need some yarn, paper, paint, clay, glaze, uh, paper mache paste, that kind of thing uh, down here clay glaze tools rubber stamps so there's a lot of things that overlap so i don't need to buy two sets of these things so when i'm buying myself i need to think of a what is a consumable good and then b what is a non-consumable good now the reason you want to know the difference between those two is because that works in your favor now at the bottom here this is not a paid advertisement for any p for any company that i'm going to talk about I'm not talking, I'm not saying any of these guys are paid me. This is non-promotional. These are just the people that I use a lot or the most and who I think are the most reputable. So in, so when you guys are buying supplies now, go through your suppliers and look at the stuff that they offer and at what price they offer. Now, as you are a school, you're going to get free shipping on all your stuff. So when you guys are going through the list, don't think about shipping or tax. Uh, most places are educational entity now this is with public schools or government uh funded schools which do not include private schools however you should have some qualifications i believe for uh tax exemption status or something with, uh, with an educational question and one of my favorite players uh, so on to uh, a couple of the the cat the catalogs if you're at a school for so many years you're going to get catalogs in the mail all the time uh blick sax trico or trico another blick uh and NASCO. Now all of these are like a massive, a massive thick stack of uh, supply manuals that I get like all the time every year. Uh, now I will say my favorite by far has got to be Blick. And the reason I like Blick is not because they have the best prices because sometimes they don't. Most of the time everything that you see, color pencils, paint, brushes, they're in the same like five dollar range so you're not really getting a, a massive discount one way or another it's all basically but they do have the easiest way to order for me if i'm building an order i want to build an online order why would you want to build an online order that's very simple you can build the online order go up to your cart print off the cart and hand that to your bookkeeper when you're doing supplies you have to put down the supply number, the amount how much, the amount how much per piece it costs, the amount of the total unit that it costs, plus the name of the object. It's a lot of writing. I don't want to do that. So printing it off, the bookkeeper has a printed off sheet that's easy to read because it's printed. It's not my handwriting, which looks like chicken scratch. And it's it's a win-win for all of us. And uh, Blick also kind of puts in there like how much is shipping or how much is this, which they go ahead and toss out. Uh, but then another thing too is if I can build multiple carts for different reasons. Now, what are different reasons? So up here on the list, I've got a couple things for my surface design class. So up here we have scissors, glue, glaze, clay. Now, of those three things, one of them is a non-consumable item. I'm going to use up clay, I'm going to use up glaze, I'm going to use up glue, but my scissors are going to stay the same for years to come. Now, because that's a non-consumable item, the non-consumable items you can decide uh, for different funding. Uh, now, a lot of principals, principals are not going to tell you this, and most coordinators don't know this, and I'm trying to help out as non-consumable items can be paid for under different terms. And now, uh, art in the state of Georgia is a Title I, or is it, art in the state of Georgia is listed as a core subject, which means we have access to Title I funds. Well, if we're using items that are non-consumable, we can technically get access to Title I funds. So, with that said, I'm going to try and find certain things that I can use to help. I want to try and find certain things in my list that are not consumable. Come on, focus, stay in focus. That are not consumable so that when I purchase them, I can use them for years to come. Now, editing software. Editing software is uh, for when we're doing movie shorts and videos in my surface design class. For that, Again, non-consumable item, and as a non-consumable item, I'm going to make sure that I get my, the most bang for my buck. Now, most of your county should have some form of editing software for your technology classes. If you can get access to that, again, that's a free material, 
you don't have to pay for it. If your budget is this big and you need this much supplies, you, it's really hard to, to get certain things. So look for what you can buy. The next thing I want to discuss with you guys is the purchasing for the future. Now purchasing for the future is when you buy supplies, think of what supplies you can use for a multitude of things, get the most bang for your buck, and things that you can buy in small amounts over a long period of time to really sustain your program. Now if you're starting out and you have a very limited budget, don't think I need to buy this and this and this right now because you don't need it right now. What you do need is things to make your program successful. You're probably gonna need some form of paper. Now, when you're buying paper, do I need 15,000 packs of construction paper? No, because you're probably not gonna use it that term. Or if you're gonna use it, you're gonna use a lot less than you think you need. Now, I'm always on the rule of thumb is buy enough supplies for 30 kids. Now. That does need to change if you know for a fact that your cap is higher than that. Uh, the cap that I used to have in middle school is 37. Lawmakers, you need to change the 37 thing. That just doesn't work for anybody ever. Bad idea. The next thing is, is that don't buy supplies that you are, don't buy the, the cream of the crop just because you want it just to work on your projects. Yes, we all want the best of the best. However, you gotta be realistic in things that you're going to buy. Now, when I'm buying paint stuff, I always buy a kit. Why do I buy a kit? Because this is the most bang for my buck. Uh, I will go ahead and buy a large kit. This one's got like 30. This has 24 watercolor kits in it. I think I usually get two of these when I'm, uh, but I only buy a new kit every five years because of what I'm getting. Uh, I'll buy the kit because it comes with a brush, it comes with a kit with the eight pans of color in there, and then I will buy replacement color kits, replacement rounds, such as these things, and pop in the individual color when that one color runs out. It's just much more realistic to buy the refills of each color, and again, when I'm buying color, I'm only buying the four colors to, to refill those, which is red, yellow, and blue, and also black. Everything else I don't buy because what color is the paper? White? Why should I buy white? Uh, why should I buy my secondary colors? It encourages the kids and forces the kids to make their own, which then stretches the materials farther and the kids are learning more processes through that act. If I'm actually spending a buck and getting some watercolors, I want to get tubes of watercolor and then so that the students only have a small amount to work with uh, which then you're getting in a waste and they're not wasting as much stuff and I know that's gonna last me for years to come. Brushes. If you get a, bu a bundle pack of brushes try and always get multi-purpose brushes. Uh, these brushes here I love Royal Brand. One they are super cheap. These are like the cheapest uh, good brushes that exist. They have cheaper brushes but those are just awful like the the ones that are like all plastic handle, like four hairs in the top that no one can paint with. Uh, these ones come in different different shapes. Uh, usually I get these on the opposite year that I'm getting a kit. So I'd buy a kit one year. The next year I'd buy the brushes because this kit runs about 130, 140 bucks. The brushes that I buy, this the can of these brushes is about $70. If you have the budget to buy all that at once, that set you up to next year all you're doing is really doing a replenish and then you can get a couple new things now if you're starting out a sis if you're starting out a new program this might be the way to go buy the brushes buy the kits next year tell tell your principal that this year we're in a building phase and we're building up all the stuff that we need next year not going to need to buy as much stuff which in their mind is oh you're being proactive for what i'm trying to get you to do all the more power to you, let me help you out. So by doing that, you can then, again, non-consumable items with some consumable items, but you can also clarify that there are non-consumable items in this, uh, which helps you sell the point on, hey, I'm not just teaching something for a standard, but I'm teaching something to equate the amount that you're actually getting to purchase from. All right, finally, let's talk about big ticket items. Now for big ticket items, things like my slab roller that I got over here, I don't wanna buy those at the beginning of the year. Big ticket items you wanna hold off for the end of the year. Tell your principal that for the next year, you would like to go ahead and see with money that they have left in the account, which you wanna to talk to them between about February and March, things that you wanna buy for the next year. These are non-consumable items that are gonna last for years to come in the system or in your school. And that also gives you a little, uh, little time in between. So you've had from August to February to figure out if there's another school where a teacher's leaving or another teacher 
doesn't use these items and if there's a way that you can trade or find a way to get those items from that one school over to your school have it you have that time frame to work in come February and March this is your plea time principal I need you to get me this because list of standards this is a non-consumable item we're gonna use it for years gonna make a lot of cool stuff for the kids that gives that gives you all the weight that you need to try and get these big ticket items will it get it for you maybe maybe not it depends on the principal and who you're and what they have left in the budget that is you got to know that but this is the most likelihood that you'll get these items so that you can continue on and creating the best program that you're going to create Hope you guys had uh, got some got some good knowledge out of this. If you have questions, always leave them down in the comments. I'll then see you guys next class. Later. Now, when you're dealing with I'm trying to get myself in frame, hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm gonna get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, working on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest. Or t no, not, not, we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, GroupMe, that's a new one for me, and Steam. Uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out, like and subscribe. See you guys later, next class. Follow, see you later. Next class, do your homework.